Nitrogen is a really important element for life. You find nitrogen in proteins and um, DNA, and and so and in fact, nitrogen, the, the presence of nitrogen, the amount of nitrogen in the soil, is one of the biggest determinants of the speed and the size of growth of plants. Now, nitrogen is naturally found. The reservoir for nitrogen is in the atmosphere as N. Two. Now the thing is though, nitrogen can't be accessed by plants straight from the atmosphere. It needs to be in a form called nitrates. So nitrates are the form of nitrogen in which plants are able to absorb through their roots and incorporate in their, um, their tissue. So we need to look at the different ways in which plants are able to get, uh, well, <laughs> So we need to look at the ways in which we can get nitrates into the soil, in other words, take nitrogen out of the atmosphere into the soil so they can be taken up by plants. So nitrates in the soil can be then taken up by the roots of plants and then be incorporated into the organic tissue of the plant. All right, so how does that occur? Well, there's three processes, two of them are natural. The first one is is lightning. So in a, a, a lightning storm, and a lightning strike, it actually takes nitrogen, gaseous nitrogen, and forms nitrates. So that's lightning. And if you can't tell from my drawing, that's lightning. So that's natural, but obviously it doesn't happen that much. So we need to have a more reliable source. And this is where we have um, nitrogen fixing bacteria. So nitrogen fixing bacteria live in the roots of um, some types of plants, particularly the pea plants, and they're able to take uh, gaseous nitrogen out of the air packet, uh, pockets in the soil and they're able to fix it. They fix the nitrogen and form it into nitrates that are then are accessible to the plants. So these nitrogen fixing bacteria have a mutualistic relationship with some plants, particularly the legumes. Now, because nitrogen is, is, is so important for the growth of plants, uh, farmers, uh, well, in, in, in industry, uh, there's, a, there's a large industry of producing fertilizer, fertilizer that is rich in nitrogen, Fertilizers that uh, farmers put onto soil to improve the nitrogen of the soil, so they get faster and more um, um, and, and greater plant growth, which is obviously important for their crops. So, uh, fertilizers. There's a process where uh, gaseous nitrogen is able to be taken uh, and into forms like uh, nitrates, ammonium nitrate, that sort of thing. So then, the nitrates then pass on up the ecosystem just through the plants being eaten. So we have animals that eat plants, like our cow. The cow that eats the plants and then obviously has nitrogen in, in, its, uh, in, its, uh, in its proteins and its muscles and its bones, etc. But these um, animals are also producing nitrogen-rich waste, so like we and poo. And also when the animals die, so when all organisms die, so we're talking about the death of plants and the death of animals. So we have this dead or detritus, dead matter that still contains a whole heap of nitrogen in the form of nitrates. So luckily we have bacteria that decompose the, um, the detritus, the, the dead um, uh, organic matter to release the nitrates back into the soil. And they're called nitrifying bacteria. They decompose detritus, putting nitrates back into the soil. And of course they do the same thing with um, that nitrogen rich uh, waste product as well, so they're able to break that down, releasing the nitrogen back into the soil. Now, there, there is actually a process that puts nitrogen back into the atmosphere, 
and that is through um, conditions that are anaerobic and we have denitrifying bacteria. So they do the opposite, they actually put um, nitrogen back into the atmosphere and that happens when we've got anaerobic conditions. So maybe um, waterlogged soil for example. Now, so that's, that's the nitrogen cycle and you can see that humans impact the nitrogen cycle by producing nitrogen rich fertilizer and putting it onto um, uh, into ecosystems where they're growing crops to maximize the growth of the plants. Now one of the problems with that though is that they um, some of those nitrates in in the soil actually can run off the ecosystem and run down into other ecosystems and contaminate those ecosystems. So we have runoff of topsoil and we have runoff of, uh, of the, the animal waste, the wee and the poo, etc. that's high in nitrogen that then contaminates other ecosystems and it can cause what's called eutrophication. So I'm going to do another video on eutrophication but the long and the short of it is that we know that nitrogen is essential for, for growth of plants. So if we have, uh, say, a waterway that's contaminated with increased nitrogen, we're going to get increased uh, uh, producer growth. And particularly, it, it's usually algae, so we get an algal bloom. And when that algae then dies, it decomposes at the bottom of the, of the waterway, but the bacteria that decompose that algae uh, take a tremendous amount of oxygen out of the water and create what's called a dead zone and that is eutrophication. So more on that in another video. But certainly what humans do when they put fertilizer onto an ecosystem is they need to, well th there's this negative impact where some of that that nitrogen rich fertilizer can actually run off into other ecosystems and have a negative impact. As well as that, of course, that when we grow crops and then remove those crops and send them off to the market, well, that nitrogen is actually taken out of the soil. So um, that the soil uh, becomes depleted of nitrogen. And that, again, is why uh, farmers put more fertilizer in. But you often see that they'll put a, a different crop in, so they'll rotate their crops. And maybe every second or third uh, crop that they put in is going to be a, a legume crop because that obviously has the nitrogen fixing bacteria, mutualistic relationship and it improves the soil.